So joining me now, Dana Lash, host of Dana on the Blaze TV, and Richard Fowler, a Fox News contributor, nationally syndicated radio talk show host. Good to have both of you uh, with us tonight. Good you know, to you look here, at, at those Martha. numbers and you think about the people who've been affected by them in cities like San Antonio and Chicago and Memphis, where they are in many neighborhoods um, living in a perilous situation and are afraid to go out at night, Richard. So what's wrong with recognizing the pain that those people are feeling? I don't think there's anything wrong with recognizing the pain. I think the job of inaugural addresses that we've seen in the past is to in inspire Americans to do more. I mean, George W. Bush did in his speech, Ronald Reagan, this idea that we are aspiring to be this great nation. And, and I think where Donald Trump missed the mark on this speech, I thought it was overall a good campaign speech, but it missed the mark when it comes to te defining what make America great again is. And when you think about the word carnage, which according to Webster's means the killing of mass people, right. uh, I don't really know if carnage is the right vocabulary word. I would use if I was the Donald. Well, I wonder if you were a family who had lost a child to heroin overdose or if you lived right. in a community where you can't go outside at night um, because of the violence that, that's happening in your streets, Dana. I, I think there are plenty of people in this country who might feel comforted that instead of platitudes on that stage that day, they heard what they understand as their reality and something that they want fixed. Martha, what you just said there, right in that sentence, is exactly why Trump won on November 8th. People are tired of platitudes. They're tired of cutesy little speeches where everyone talks about hope and change. And instead, after the confirmation, you get a nightmare, an eight-year-long nightmare, where people are losing their jobs and the labor participation rate has slid by 4%, where you see millions who have lost access to specialists. They've lost their health care completely, or their premiums have increased to the point where they can't afford them because of the Affordable Care Act, where they have seen jobs be crushed, where they have seen manufacturing decline. It has, by all accounts, by all of these Americans who have endured this, been a carnage for them. They have seen their dreams killed. They've lost their children to drugs. It has been incredibly awful. Mm -hmm. And that is why there were so many people and Democrats. Let us not forget that one of the huge voting blocks that turned out for Donald Trump on November 8th were blue collar Democrats who had long been counted as a base voter I mean, by the I mean, Democrat I, I, Party. You know, this I, I, is why you make it happened. Great points. You, you know, but when you look at the snarkiness that we saw in some of the response to this, Richard, you know, the sort of mega death and, oh, it, you know, it, it represents this and, and that. Um, <laughs> I do think a lot of people who listen to this or who see that the way it's presented think, you don't get me either. You know, you don't understand what's going on in my life either. So what, I, again, what's wrong with recognizing the reality that so many people who voted for Donald Trump are feeling out there and wouldn't your party be better off if perhaps they didn't well, make fun of that? I don't think anybody from, I don't think you've heard any Democratic elected official make fun of that, uh, right? But I, here's the truth. The truth is that people want to aspire to something. And beyond that, I think what Democrats are looking for, Trump voters and people who didn't vote for Trump are looking for, are real solutions to the problem. Trump didn't outline any of those solutions in his, what, quote, unquote, make America great again means. He didn't tell us how he's going to fix it. He talks in complete and total platitudes. I'm going to build a wall. Nobody knows how he's going to build it. Well, Richard, Nobody knows where the wall is going to go. And based on I'm going to repeal other than Obamacare. What we've seen the last couple of days. And, and, well, wait a we minute, have seen, wait a minute. You know, action after action after action. So that, we I mean, that, that's seen, a little tough. We are still wait, we're still waiting for them to say to tell us what this quote unquote Obamacare replacement's gonna be, and they haven't done that. They've yes, talked about platitudes. I, I have an idea on it. It's gonna be Choi, it's all it's gonna be choice, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. Vocabulary Richard, words don't mean anything. I have a great idea as to what the replacement would be. Why don't you go back and read all of the Republican that's bills not a bill. that were filed on but it? There's no bill no, filed no, 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 now. Because that's where a lot of it's coming from. Don't talk right. over me because you're fine. But Republicans filed <laughs> it, and Nancy Pelosi and, and Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid allowed them to die because the they, thing. they didn't right, want to bring it up. Here's the thing. American Carnage We've got sounds to like a ministry Bill. band name, by the way. American Carnage <laughs> means American death, head. according to Webster. Well, he was pointing out some realities uh, that people do experience. Um, it's an uncomfortable, it's an inconvenient much. truth. Richard and Dana, thanks, thanks guys. We'll talk to you uh, next time.